Let's begin by going over how to set up your Mac to work with your camcorder. If you have a digital camcorder like this one, your hardware setup is as easy as connecting a firewire cable from your camera to your Macintosh. If you want to watch your video program on a television as you edit, then we recommend connecting the analog outputs of your camera to the analog inputs of your television. Where these connectors are located and what they're called will vary from camera to camera, so consult your camcorder user manual for specifics. The first step in the editing process is to capture your footage onto the computer's hard drive. Make sure your camcorder is turned on, then select VTR mode on the camera. This will allow the Final Cut Express software to communicate with your camera, as well as give you the ability to see your video on your LCD or television monitor as you work. Now insert your source tape into the camcorder, then launch Final Cut Express on your Mac. Before capturing your video material, it's a good idea to save what Final Cut Express calls a project to your hard drive. A project is a tiny file that represents your entire video program, including where all related files are stored on your hard drive. When you launch Final Cut Express for the first time, an empty project file is created for you called Untitled Project. To save this project under a new name, choose Save Project As from the File menu. When saving project files, Final Cut Express defaults to the Documents folder in OS X. However, feel free to store them wherever you like. Just remember to give your project a name that is both meaningful and is easy to remember. After saving the project file, you'll notice that the Project tab in this window now displays the name I just gave it. Our next step is to tell Final Cut Express what type of camcorder we have connected to the Mac. From the Final Cut Express menu, choose Easy Setup to bring up the Easy Setup window. Out of the box, Final Cut Express is set to work with NTSC DV camcorders. In most cases, this setting will work fine. However, if you're working with footage that was shot in PAL or anamorphic, also known as widescreen, you simply choose the appropriate preset from this pop-up. For additional information about your particular camera and what settings to use, consult your Final Cut Express user manual. Before capturing video, we want to take a look at where Final Cut Express will store all your video files. From the Final Cut Express menu, choose Preferences, then click on the Scratch Disk tab. A scratch disk is simply a location on one or more of your disk drives where Final Cut Express captures your media and stores it for access when you're editing your program. This line of text here tells us the path or directory for the current scratch disk as well as how much space is available on that disk. Final Cut Express defaults to the Documents folder on your hard drive. This location is fine if you're using a Mac that only has one drive. However, if you're using a Mac with two or more drives, it's recommended that you change the scratch disk to one of these additional drives in order to achieve better playback performance. You can do this by clicking the Set button, then locate the additional drive. Select the disk, then click Choose at the bottom of the window. Notice the path has now changed to reflect the new scratch disk location. Click OK to exit this window. To begin capturing video from your camcorder, make sure you click inside the project window to activate it, then from the file menu choose Capture. This will bring up the capture window. A quick way to tell if Final Cut Express recognizes your camera is whether or not you see the words VTR OK at the bottom of the window. Controlling your camera is just a matter of using these familiar VCR style buttons along the bottom of the capture window. Additionally, you can move quickly through the tape by dragging this shuttle slider. The further you drag the slider in either direction, the faster the tape shuttles backward or forward. If you want to look at your video frame by frame, you can drag this jog slider. Most likely, you will want to rewind your tape before you start to capture. To start a capture operation, just queue up your tape to the place you want to capture from, then click the Play button. When you see the portion of the video you want to capture, just click the Capture Now button and Final Cut Express will begin to capture your video from that point forward until you tell it to stop by hitting the Escape key on your keyboard. After hitting the Escape key, Final Cut Express will place the clip into your project. It's as simple as that. If you want a bit more precision when capturing your video material, you'll also have the option of setting in and out points before you capture. 
just queue up your tape to the frame you want to begin on and click the In button. Now locate your out point on the tape and click the Out button. Now you simply click the Capture Clip button and a box will appear that will allow you to name your clip. And Final Cut Express will capture the material on your tape between the in and out points, then place the clip into your project. Now that our clips have been captured, we need to look at the various ways Final Cut Express gives you to properly organize and display your video assets. The primary window for doing this is called the browser window. You can think of the browser window as a giant filing cabinet for all of the content you'll be using in your video program. Here we can see the various types of video assets as represented by these visual icons. Video clips that have linked audio associated with them display a little speaker icon in the corner of the thumbnail, whereas audio-only clips are represented by big speaker-only icons. To see a larger or smaller view of these icons, choose Browser Items from the View menu, then select a larger or smaller view from the list. To better organize your video material by category or some other criteria, you will want to create a bin. A bin is simply a folder that behaves like those found on your Mac desktop. To create a bin, choose New Bin from the File menu. Now just drag the clips you want to separate into the bin, then rename it when you're finished. To open this bin, simply double-click on it and the bin will open in its own window. To close the bin, click on the red button.